Welcome everyone to a video lecture on Heidegger and Hegel on history and negativity. I will be reading from my book on Heidegger, Heidegger on death and being. And if you would like to study Heidegger with me more intensely, then please just follow the link in the description of this video. This is part of the second part of my book, which treats of the Ereignis and the Seinsgeschichte, usually translated as the history of being. I now tend to translate it as the tidings of being or even the tidal waves of being. And the Ereignis is not an event, not even an event of appropriation, but is the realm to which all of metaphysics has responded. It is its dispensations that have given rise to the various understandings of being. And it is through the thought of radical concealment, through Aletheia, which is related to death in Heidegger, to the utterly non-available, that this comes into view. So to understand Heidegger, we need to consider death at every step of the thinking path. So the thought of concealment, Verbergung, and hence also of the so-called history of being, which is the tidal waves of being, the tidings of being, this thought now is Heidegger's attempt to think Geschichte and negativity, but of course much more radically than Hegel. Heidegger tries to show that the completion of metaphysics that sets in with Hegel is to some degree an extinguishing of the great fire of thinking. Yet this situation also provides the unique chance to consider what lies in darkness for metaphysics. Being, das Sein, with a Y, and the Ereignis itself, this realm. That is to say, Heidegger tries to think entirely without beings, to let go of beings and everything familiar. Here is death already showing itself. Heidegger tries to think the withdrawing ground, the off ground. But this is what, at the same time, opens the possibility to gain. And not just the possibility, but the likely realm, the realm in which a certain, uh, a, a certain dimension of love opens up for another beginning. It's about the opening up instead of becoming, as Nietzsche puts it, uh, 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 backward-looking antiquarians. So, the simple wealth, however, of beings again is also beginning to show itself through death and through concealment. And without, then, our urge to manipulate and optimize them. In his notes on Hegel's negativity from 1938 and 1939, which these notes were recently translated and published in English for the first time, I think this is about three, four years ago, I wrote the, for the Hegel Bulletin, I wrote the review of Heidegger's notes on Hegel's negativity. These are notes that Heidegger wrote for himself, but then also which he, uh, I think, presented to a group of peers at the time. So he argues that, quote from Heidegger, absolute philosophy must enclose negativity. And that basically means not to take it seriously. On death in Hegel, Heidegger thus says that death, quote, can never become a serious threat. No catastrophe is possible, nor is any downfall and subversion. Everything is already unconditionally secured and accommodated. End of quote from Heidegger's notes. So, the supposedly unconditional and independent, the self-sufficient absolute, shows itself to be always already secured. But what secures and supports the absolute? The absolute is always already secured by its total consumption of death and negativity. The absolute needs them in order to become absolutely unified. Now, of course, we have to wonder whether Heidegger here understands Hegel correctly. Because for Hegel, 
negativity and the absolute and the idea, etc., are not horizons toward, towards which the logic moves. And I would urge you to uh, listen to my uh, videos on Hegel on this channel to get a better understanding of the science of logic um, and what it is that Hegel is after. I would even say that perhaps to think of being as the immediate indeterminate is even more of a withdrawing ground than sometimes Heidegger can think. But we have to here follow Heidegger to see what Heidegger means, because there is, that again, um, sorry, something that's uh, not, uh, that there's something that is, I think, that Heidegger importantly uh, uh, sees um, that perhaps Hegel himself could not see, even if it doesn't do full justice to Hegel's thought. And the grander vision, of course, is one which incorporate, which considers the question of the place of metaphysics now, post Hegel and post Kant, especially. So here again, the absolute, das absolute, is already secured by its total consumption of death and negativity. The absolute needs them in order to become absolutely unified. The absolute must consume all opposites and contradictions. This thinking cannot rather does not want to enter the abyss. Note what Hegel says about death in the preface to his phenomenology. Here's Hegel. Death, if that is what we want to call this non-actuality. So death is non-actuality. As we know from being in time, death is the own most possibility. Hegel does not go there yet, but it is not actual. So there is a sense of non-availability here also in Hegel. Thus Hegel appreciates and understands that death is the utterly unavailable and that it is, is what defies actualization. That is, death is close to possibility and the knot, the knot that sways in the possible. Still, absolute thinking immediately consumes this non-actuality and does not let this non-actuality take its course. Even though death is the most dreadful thing, quote from Hegel. On Heidegger's reading of this passage, it is always already clear, always already clear, timelessly clear, that death is what allows spirit, with a capital S, to secure and complete and fulfill itself. Death, spirit, requires death, this utter dreadful non-actuality, to come into its own, to simplify it, it has to walk through its this um, this this radical negativity to arrive at a mediated immediacy of itself. So it is then, therefore, I have argued, death is not an irreducible non-availability. There is something here in death um, that grants as it were, a certain almost pre-configured um, securitization, <laughs> speak with this financial language, uh, of spirit. Instead, death is integrated in the total consumption of spirit, hence it's not irreducibly non-available. Heidegger does not buy the presuppositionless nature of Hegel's thought. The negativity of death as absolute master serves to mediate the immediacy of positivity. Spirit fully attains itself when it strides through death and thereby makes this non-actuality less or not at all dreadful. Thus, spirit domesticates death. As such, death cannot be the transformational moment in the sense of science geschichte, of the tidings of being and the turnings of being that Heidegger sees as possible and necessary, of course, possible and necessary, possibility and necessity go together for Heidegger, they collide. And this is what Heidegger sees in death. This is also a hint at um, the why the functionaries of Gestell want to eradicate death and um, why it is through death that without having any, anything secured, nothing manageable, etc., that perhaps there is a twisting free from Gestell. Hegel then rather uses death to secure against the abyss, because by withstanding this Unwirklichkeit, this, this dreadful non-actuality, spirit finds itself and thus provides 
a ground to beings. It's not to say that Hegel is a foundationalist to bring in all these scholarly terms, but it is that spirit, so spirit is not underlying beings beforehand. But it is through thought that spirit becomes the ground of beings. And I think there's a difference here. And it's an important one. For Heidegger, beings are to have no ground whatsoever. However, there must be a grounding through mortals. Heidegger attempts exactly the opposite. His thinking remains in the off-ground, in the withdrawing ground, in the, quote, unsupported and unprotected. Death is the window toward that thought of being. For death is the non-resolvable, non-sublatable tragedy at the heart and at the core of existence. By withstanding that tragedy and accepting that ultimate frailty and weakness, mortal thinking enters into the thought of the unsupported and unprotected that always already needs human responses, responding. So there is freedom in Heidegger. And it's, it, the freedom lies in the response. Let me quote again what Heidegger says in the in Das Ereignis. This is uh, Gesamtausgabe, Volume 71. We devastate the abyssal, the off-ground, the withdrawing ground, event-related, Ereignishaft, impossible to translate, realm of death. If we seek to calculate what might be coming after death. Thereby we degrade death to a null passageway. This then means that death must remain that unresolvable tension at the heart of who we are. For this allows us to think the draft of being. It is that being, death itself is of being and touches us in this manner. Death is what lets mortal thinking experience the possibility not to give a foundation as metaphysics qua onto theology has always tried to do and therefore death in that being historical sense is what lets thinking leave behind metaphysics. Hegel's negativity, even as absolute disunity, already secures the mediation of the immediacy of life. Heidegger in this regard thus speaks of the quote complete conciliation of everything. In Hegel, end of quote. The negativity that is death as absolute master serves to repress the immediacy of positivity. As such, death cannot be that transformational moment that Heidegger sees in it. Death for Heidegger, hence, is catastrophic. In the Greek sense of the word, where kata means down and under, and strephein means to turn. Kata strephein downward turning and upward coming. Death as catastrophe, as catastrophe, is the kairos of the downturn or subversion of metaphysics, of philosophy itself, and therefore of the transformation of human being. Death so vehemently brings before the intensity of being as the knot that the outcome is precisely not at all yet certain but the future is open, as it is in Hegel's, as it is not, perhaps, in Hegel's articulation of the truth of metaphysics, at least according to Heidegger. This uncertainty, and this is what we have to level against Hegel, though. Truth and knowledge are about certainty for Hegel. So, this uncer uncertainty is what must take place to transform of the truth and to transform and to overcome, we could say, modernity. Heidegger this often speaks of Vordenken, and by the way, this is what philosophy enters into or thinking itself with Nietzsche. Nietzsche is the first Vordenker, the pre thinker, not a prophet, uh, not a forecaster, but someone who thinks before. And in this way, for Denken means to push into what is not yet but could be and can become through such a vehement, strong thought. So, Heidegger often speaks of for Denken, of thinking ahead toward what is not yet given, but toward the other beginning, which, which 
bursts out in waves from the tidings of what has been, but in thinking that which has remained unthought, another beginning begins to open itself up. Whereas um, the, the story of, um, say, let's just say that uh, other understandings of history have more or less either a cyclical or a linear understanding. And very, and of course, we can other have other metaphors uh, in there too, but n there's rarely one of tidal waves, tidings, and turnings, etc. And of course, the beautiful word tidings in English also has there's a verb that goes to it, which is to be tied. The coming together of that which tides, that which occurs, takes place, but also brings message, etc. So this, as Heidegger writes in the first volume on Nietzsche, in his Nietzsche book, allows us to see what has been. What has remained dark is not anything mystical or nothing of fancy. It is the qua. Ens qua ens. Being as being. In the formula, the ends qua ends. Metaphysics has never specifically thought the unconcealedness of the qua. It remained concealed in plain sight. This unconcealedness has remained concealed because metaphysics has not thought the as such. It has not asked the question of being. And Hegel did not either. In plain sight, something rather simple withdraws for millennia. The unconcealed remained concealed, and hence the task is now to think this simple thought. So, maybe to continue briefly, in his notes on overcoming metaphysics, Heidegger also remarks that the other beginning is not a simple return to the so-called history of philosophy. Instead, the attempt here is to think ahead, to think possible futures out of that and in relation to that which has been. Futures that are, I may add, coined by limitations and finitude and not fantasies of an endless and so on progression towards ever greater superlatives. The negativity of the absolute master then cannot be in or cannot lie in the least uh, similar to the not that death indicates, according to Heidegger. Nonetheless, death, rather being towards death, which points to the utmost, shall serve not to negate being, but rather to endow, stiften, the grund, the ground of its complete and essential affirmability, to quote Heidegger. What must occur, however, is that death is not consumed, but brings before being in its unwantedness. This catastrophe, this turning within itself, shows the difference between being and beings, and only this difference allows for the affirmation of being. For out of this cut, this schism, is how being comes itself into view. So, I could continue, of course, forever. Um, but I would uh, invite you to follow the link down below in the uh, link in the description of the video if you'd like to study Heidegger uh, more intensely and um, I'll like to thank you very much indeed and uh, if you have any comments just uh, feel free to leave them also uh, in below the video thank you very much